we listen to today and we will take it to take it with us as we leave from here today we thank you for the for the scripture that we are having that the person who is delivering the message that we will receive it in jesus name thank you heavenly father thank you for all the days of our lives thank you for everything heavenly father in jesus name we pray amen Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. GHX 42. Close to the forty two.
Amen. It's time for search the scripture. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for your presence, Lord in heaven. We exalt your name. We thank you for bringing us once again together in your presence. Father, we are gathered this morning because we want to receive from you, Lord in heaven. We will thank you for a wonderful and faithful week, Lord in heaven, for how you've always been there for us since the day we were born. Lord, we thank you for the prayers this morning and the song. Father, as we're going to listen to your word, Lord in heaven, bless us. Lord in heaven, uplift us, Lord, Father, because we are your children. You adopted us through your son, Jesus, made us clean and blemish. Father, we thank you for that wonderful love. Father, we pray this morning that you extend the love to those who don't have it. Father, Lord in heaven, for those who have not given their life to you, Father, we pray for salvation for them all around the world so that they will enjoy the thanksgiving and the presence that you have in our lives. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. We, the last time we um, didn't have such the scriptures, but we heard from the Lord. We spoke about our continents and the fact that we trust God or not. We asked the question, do you trust Jesus? Do you love our Father in heaven? That if you trust Jesus, as the word of the Lord says, that if you, Jesus said, if you love me, you will follow my commandments. The two greatest commandments, love thy father, thy God, and love thy neighbor as yourself. The reason why that the greatest is because that if you love your neighbor as yourself, then it's easy to love God that you've never seen. And the reason why then if you love your God, thy God, is that then it's easy to follow the commandment. You know, um, they used to talk then when I was in school that uh, they say, you know, um, uh, this uh, boy or girl has used some kind of magic portion on either the, the girl has used a magic portion on the boy or vice versa. And I never believed in that. You know, the reason is that when they tell me, I say, look, when the other person you say they use portion on actually loves the other person so much that they don't see what you're seeing. You know, that's the type of love Christ demands from me and you. Today we're going to look at sowing and reaping. Why did I talk about the love for Christ? Because if we love God, we'll follow his commandment. Amen? So let's take our memory verses in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. Let's read together after the count of two. One, two. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. Praise the Lord. You know, I've always said that, you know, what you put in is what you get. The training that you get a lot of times turns out to be how good you are. If you are trained by somebody who is very good, you tend to become very good. The reason being that 
you get all the intricacies of all the training that is required to make you good. Amen? And the more reason that I say what you put in is what you get. If you hire an apprentice at work, if you teach the apprentice every single thing, when any one customer comes and asks questions, the apprentice knows everything, so the apprentice will give quite a, a, a good answers. But if you teach the apprentice only part of what is required for him or her to carry out their duty, when they ask them questions about the things that they were not taught, will they be able to give answers to? Praise the Lord. When you, what you sow is what you reap. We have spoken about it. That if you go out here, you make a garden, and you sow nothing there. Well, if God help you, you get some weed growing there. So grasses, whatever type that were there before will grow. But if you make a ridge and you sow corn or millet or rice, what do you expect to? Have anyone ever sown orange and wants to receive uh, mango? You receive mango, you sow, so you, you expect that when you sow one seed of orange, right, the tree will grow and bear fruits. So you are going to reap what? A lot of oranges right from one. Right? So if you sow four, you have four trees. So let's say you're reaping four uh, from one tree, you will pluck 20 oranges. So if you sow four, you're going to pluck 80 oranges. Amen? What you sow is what you reap. Praise the Lord. If you don't sow, and you expect to reap, uh, <laughs> except there is miracle, right? You just make the farm and then you leave. You come back in uh, six months' time, and my brothers and sisters, you just see grasses growing there. Let's quickly read our text, Second Corinthians chapter nine. Second Corinthians chapter nine. Second Corinthians chapter nine. For as a touch, as touching the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you. For I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that a care was ready a year ago, and your zeal had provoked very many. Yea, have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf that also I said ye may be ready yet I have sent the brethren lest our boasting sorry less happily if they of Macedonia are come with me and find you unprepared we that we say not ye should be ashamed in this same confident boasting. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exalt the brethren that they would go before unto you and make you beforehand your bounty. Wherefore, sorry, whereof ye had noticed before that the same might be ready as a manner of bounty and not as of covetousness. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according to as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that ye also having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. 
as it is written, he had dispersed abroad, he had given to the poor, his righteousness remained forever. Praise the Lord. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruit of your righteousness, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God for the administration of this service not only supplied the wants of the saints, but is abundant also by many things given unto God. Wealth by the experiment of this ministration. They glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. And by their prayer for you, which long after you, for the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. Praise the Lord. We have seen so many things captured here. How we need to sow and how we're going to reap. And also we've seen that it is because we are children of God that we are supposed to sow. If we look at uh, you know, the prophet Malachi, it says, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse. That is Malachi 3 verse 10. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out the blessings that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Amen? If you read Galatians also, Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Whatever a man soweth, he shall also reap. We have seen. You know, sometimes when we talk about sowing, we are talking about money, material gift. But I tell you, we also see the time that you spend for the Lord. You know, when you go and evangelize to other people, you are sowing. Amen? Because it, they say time is money. When you go to work, a lot of people are paid by the hour. So if you spend 15 minutes, you spend an hour, you spend two hours, you know, you spend five minutes to minister the word of the Lord to other people, you are sowing. If you sow five minutes, the Lord will give you five minutes. If you sow five, you know, we talk about the, the, the um, um, when Christ spoke, uh, the, he spoke about the talents that were given to people, two talents, five and ten, and how it was multiplied. Think about it like I said. You know, if you come to church, you're an usher. As you usher people to their chair, you make sure that there is peace, you know, organization in the church. You're spending your time to serve the Lord. Amen? If you are somebody who receives tithes and offering in the church, or you count the number of people in church, you are sowing in the house of the Lord. If you are somebody who teaches in the house of God, you are sowing in the house of the Lord. You're spending time to prepare. You come to the house of the Lord and you teach. People receive. You are sowing in the house of God. A lot of time when we receive, we don't even know that we're receiving from God. Think about the fact that you're driving and somebody almost hit you. You know, think about the catastrophe that has been prevented from your life. Sometimes we read spiritually, we don't know. Because we think that, um, well, I'm serving the Lord, 
It's not only that I'm teaching in the house of the Lord, I'm giving materials to the house of the Lord. When you counsel other people, you are also sowing in the house of God. Sowing is the secret of prosperity. Second Corinthians chapter six, sorry, chapter nine. We we'll read again. We we'll read verse six and eight. Praise the Lord. But this I say: He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Every man according as he purpose in his heart. So let him give not grudgingly or of necessity. Let's underline the word in our Bible. Not grudgingly or of necessity. Nobody is forcing you to give. If the Lord has placed in your heart to go and minister for five minutes, go and minister for five minutes. Do not because to say, well, Brother Benjamin has told me, well, if I don't go, I'm looking at Brother Benjamin or I'm looking at that sister. God said, well, he loved a cheerful giver. It's better that you give one cent to the Lord, you are cheerful about it, than grudgingly giving ten dollars to God. And you are unhappy about it. And you are complaining about it. That giving will not be accepted by God. Because you are whining. God loves a cheerful giver. Please, my brothers and sisters, God doesn't want your money. God doesn't want your money. It is not your money. The money that me and you have, let me tell you, God has given us to keep it for him. If you think that you're a child of God and you have a lot of money, it's your money, it's not your money. He has given you, so use it wisely. You know, later on I'll talk about, you know, the brothers and sisters that God has given you. How have you sowed the seed in their hearts? The children that God has given you, how have you sowed that seed in their heart? The spouse that God has given you, have you taken the time to sow the seed? If you don't sow, you don't reap. I have several times on the pulpit spoken about my father i've even spoken about my older brothers why because those seeds were sown in me right from when i was small there are songs that i used to sing we sing anyhow i have a brother who a younger he it is good to praise the song it is good to praise the lord hallelujah it is good to praise the Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Do you know how he used to sing it? A coo, 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 praise the Lord, hallelujah. A coo, we still call him a coo, coo. He has his family and every, we call him a coo, 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 praise the Lord. You know, he laughs about it, but he's joyful about it. Even though he didn't know the words, because I think he was about three, four years old. He didn't know the words, but he jumbled in. There were a few songs that I didn't know how to sing very well as a kid. But now, I, in my language, but now I can sing them very well, better than all my siblings. Because when I look back and say, what does that, what I was saying, what does it mean in my head? But those words were revealed to me without anyone telling me. Even the understanding of those songs revealed to me without anyone telling me. What seed have you sown? When I talk about my father, it's because he has sown the seed and he's reaping now even though he's gone to be with the Lord. The secret of sowing. We have read, what you sow is what you actually reap. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that ye always have an all sufficiency 
In all things, my abound to every good work. In all things, you are going to have sufficiency. You know, they said, if you look at, my God will provide all my needs, right? But then, think David, he said, my, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. So it means that when you're the child of God, he'll provide for you that you will never want, you'll be content. Sowing. There are so many inspirational testimony. You know, sowing in the house of God is like putting money in the bank. You put money in savings account or whatever account that you put in. If you don't put in money, are you going to have a... If you put in one dollar, probably if it is 0.4%, uh, you end up with 0.4 cent, cents. But if you put in a hundred dollars, you'll be earning for four dollars per month, let's say for instance. So the more you put into the bank, the more profit you get. You know, there's a song that many sing, take my silver and give me gold. But yet, you don't sow. If you don't sow, how can you say, Father, take my silver? What silver is he taking? When the silver is not even sown there, you're saying, take my silver and give me gold. There's no even silver. So what silver is God going to take that he will give you gold? Hmm? In the economy of God, you must sow before you reap. In fact, it's not only the economy of God. Even the economy here, except if you steal. And if you steal, it's not reaping. It's a crime. Amen. Even at work, you sow before you reap. Because you have to go and spend that time. The time that you're spending to work, you're sowing a seed. If you don't go and sow that seed now, if you work for six hours, you get paid for six hours. If you work for 12 hours, you earn more. Amen? Even here on earth, you sow. It's a divine, it's a divine key to prosperity in the kingdom of God. It's even practical here on earth for me and you. Let every man, one of you, lay by him in store. Paul said, it doesn't matter. If you don't sow, there is no reaping. And I will rebuke the devourer. God has said you rebuke the devourer on your behalf. That is in Malachi 11 and 12. He said, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, said the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. You know, think about it. When you bless somebody's heart, you be called blessed. When you sow, <coughs> when you sow in a person, you blessed. It's the same. Although our Father is in heaven, you know, his work, he cannot come down here because he has tasked us with the work. Amen? So we have to give. We have to give to advance the ministry of God. Amen? Evangelism. You know, we have evangelism. We have literatures that are shared. How can those be carried out if we don't pay tithes and offering. 
even the house of God where we worship. It has to be paid for. Or it has to be built. The electricity, the water used, they all have to be paid for. We all have to obey the word of God. You know, you can put your money in the bank, right? Like we saw with the Great Depression, that when they declare, those banks declare bankruptcy, you lose your money. Or you buy stocks. When they declare bankruptcy, you lose your money. But in God's economy, it's not the same. There's no bankruptcy. In God's economy, there's no bankruptcy. What you sow is what you actually reap. It is not like when you plant that is dependent on water or is dependent on sunlight. What you sow is what you reap. That is God's economy. There is no what they call in Nigeria 419. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I commanded this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of earth and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God that is in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 and 2 God has promised me a new prosperity all we have to do is Obey. Who knows the song? What the? Just obey. Just obey is the way. God's way. Want something to do? Just obey. Just obey. Praise the Lord. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandment and his statutes, which I command thee this day that all this curse shall come upon thee and overtake thee. It's not my word. Deuteronomy 28 verse 15. Can this be true? Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me. Malachi chapter 3 verse 9. God is saying, we should not rob God. I have said it here that when you sow, you reap in the kingdom of God. Even here on earth, you have to work to reap, except if you steal. The question is, my brothers and sisters, what is the secret of prosperity in the kingdom of God? It's by giving. I have said you give materially money or your time. There is no any other way out. All of us, we must all cultivate the habit of giving. Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. You don't get prosperity by hoarding, by hoarding things unto yourself. But we all have to give. If, you've, if you refuse to give, Proverbs 11, 24, 25, there is... There is that scattered and yet increased, and there is that withhold it more than its meat, but it tended to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. Amen. Prove me now here with say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven. Amen. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. Think about the windows of heaven open and see what will happen to you. If you'll be able to carry what is coming from 
Just the window. Just the window of heaven open for you. Manner and motive of sowing. How do we need to sow? And why do we need to sow? Second Corinthians chapter 9, 7 and 8. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly. As the Lord has laid in, in your heart, you should give not grudgingly, the Lord in heaven has said. That is how we need to give. We need to give as God has purposed in my heart, in your heart. Please, my brothers and sisters, never give grudgingly. Give cheerfully and happily unto the Lord. And let it not be of necessity. Let it not be that somebody, you're looking at somebody, that's why you have to give. Give because you love your Father in heaven. Whether it be money or your time. For God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That ye always having all sufficiency in all things. Amen. You have sufficiency in all things. The greatest challenge for given in the church is because members do not, sometimes members discover that they do not have the ability to give. Giving, it doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor. It's the same. We have to all give. If we don't give, think about it. How can the ministry of God prosper? How can, how can people be saved? How can the word of God be preached around the world? The church, the church needs money. The church needs people to evangelize. It's given. The church needs people who are dedicated to counsel to teach, to be ushers, to sing in the choir. The church, our Father in heaven, expects us to sow. Sow in the seed that our Father has asked all of us to do. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that ye always will have all sufficiency in all things, may abound in every good work, and you will not be cursed. Amen. Glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ, for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men, and by prayer for you which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, 13, and 14. It is not measured by the amount of money that you give. Our Father in heaven is asking, give bountifully and cheerfully. Let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him. Everyone is expected to give. Let every one of you lay in the store as God has prospered him. Let every one of you lay by him in store. As soon as you get, how are you supposed to give? As soon as you get, you're supposed to give unto the Lord. We're supposed to give cheerfully and liberally. And the scriptures even say, let your right hand not know that your left hand is given. It means that we give to the Lord not by boasting, but quietly given unto the Lord. Amen. We've seen that there is, there is that scattered and yet increased, and there is that withholded more than is meat, but is tender to poverty. Amen. 
honor the Lord with their substance and with the first fruits of thine increase. So shall their burns be filled with plenty. Proverbs 3, 9, 10. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and run over. We remember that what you sow is what you reap. Our uh, Father in heaven said in Malachi 3, verse 10, Prove, prove me now, herewith, said the Lord of, of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out blessing. What is the lifestyle of the sower? The fundamental principle is, first of all, before you give unto the Lord, what do you need to do? Give your own life. If you have not given your life to Christ, no matter what you give, your time and money is for nothing. You have to repent, confess your sin if you have not. If you are a backslider, God expects the same thing from you. Turn around and come back to him. Give your life first. That is the first thing that he demands from you. He has sowed thee, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Micah 6, 8. First of all, you have to walk with God. And Samuel said, had the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. Our Father in heaven is saying, first, we have to give our lives to him. If you have not all that you give, your time, the money, it's all going to be in vain. First, give your life to Christ, then you can give your time and material. Let's take our question. Our time is well spent. Question number one. In what ways can one give to God? In what ways can one give to God? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our brother has answered. Our time, our money, and our life to God. What is necessary to give? Why is it necessary to give bountifully to God? Why is it necessary to give bountifully to God? Why is it necessary? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As our brothers have said, what you sow is what you reap. If you sow bountifully, you will reap. Praise the Lord. And if you sow sparingly, explain the law of sowing and reaping. What is the law of sowing and reaping? Amen. Praise the Lord. That was simple, right? What are God's condition for giving and to what extent can a believer give? What is God's condition for giving? Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Question number five. What is the most important thing you can give to God? And why should it be given first before anything else? Praise the Lord. And why is it important that it's given first before anything else? Praise the Lord. Father, Lord, we thank you for the message that we've gotten this morning from you. Father, we thank you for teaching us on how to give. Father, to be cheerful givers and to give bountifully. 
Father, not to give grudgingly. Lord in heaven, I pray this morning that each and every one of us will never give grudgingly to, to you in Jesus' name. That Father, Lord in heaven, as we give our time, as we give materials, as we give money, as we sow the seed of life, Father, we will sow it cheerfully. Father, open our hearts that let's sow the seed of evangelism also. Father, let's win souls unto you. Let's spend the time that is sowing. Father, we shall reap in heaven. You have told us. You have told us that we should wear our treasure is. That's where our heart is. Father, as we sow here on earth, by giving to you, to the progress of your work, by, Father, by sowing the seed of salvation in the heart of many, that Father will reap by spiritual growth. Father, we pray this morning for those who don't give happily. Father, open their hearts that they'll be cheerful givers. Father, let's pray for those who don't have this morning. Father, we're praying. Father, Lord in heaven, we commit them into your hands. That, Father, you have mercy on their lives. That, Father, you provide them jobs. That, Father, they will reap bountifully. And that, Father, as they reap, they will sow. They will sow in your kingdom. And those who are lacking spiritually, Father, enrich them also. That they will enrich others. They will sow in the lives of others. Father, we uphold you. We thank you for all your children that are seated here. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Does anyone have any questions? Does anyone have any question about the side of the scriptures? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I am Brian Benjamin. We always be in the opposite side. I was a day who was preaching here. He said no. And that it, Pastor Matthew, will allow me to come to pulpit again. But the problem is that if you don't have somebody that is, uh, what word can I use? Challenging you. You won't know how to run. So two of us this morning, we are going to challenge ourselves. So then what I will do is that all morning he has in his house, he will go and bring it. The wife will go. <laughs> Don't you let me eat. <laughs> It is way in Jesus' name. <laughs> you know what the joy I always have is whenever I'm so down thinking, if I use the press, please allow me. My wife doesn't like me to use the negative word against myself, but I like expressing myself as it is. Uh, whenever I come to the church, I feel happy. Uh, whenever I see ourselves like this, I feel happy. And that's always been my joy. That's always my question. God will continue to help us in Jesus' name. As a leader in the church, there's nothing I will cover for us this morning. And I don't want I want us to be very sensitive of it. When I'm I'm talking to us as a worker, listen, I don't care that children are here, but I'm talking to us as a worker. Uh, Brother Benjamin may not know. And then this, even this thing, you know, what I want to see now may not be a, uh, a be uh, a way to arrow. And there are other things that you know that we're supposed to be in the Washington D.C. today. Keep praying for me, so that uh, I will not be armor. The church will not be. <laughs> I've gone against a lot of rule of Washington D.C., but it is well. It is well. When we the just bought a land for convention in the United States and they want to build it. Uh, when they want to do this, 
if you actually know that it is not Pastor Dada or any other person is going to be there, that is a lot of things that is going on that because of our nature, because of my nature, we do not uh, know. You may not know they are building a house for GS in the United States. Whoever that is blessing you spiritually, you need to bless, at, at, even at his own age. And this is how you can look at it. If we, we can be very happy to host Pastor Moro, the old church in the United States, we'll be very happy to host Pastor Kumuyi. It's my, I mean, it's something of. But most of all, we do not know because we are far away from this sea. When I say far away from this sea, from what is going on in this sea, and that's what the pastor Dada was complaining. That how are we operating if all these things we do not know? In the evening prayer by nine o'clock, we do not attend. Uh, confession, hardly. Uh, what is August meeting, hardly. And all these things are affecting us in. But God is going to help us in Jesus' name. Uh, so they are trying to build, uh, to to buy a land. They they are at, they have bought it already. And they have bought it already, and they went there yesterday to check it. To uh, all the pastor went there. I still. Pastor Mati did not go. So, when a message comes like this, that's why I will say, I am Brother Benjamin, we will be against ourselves this morning. Uh, we should be, because he does not know, he may not know the reason why they brought this message out. When things like this come out, they want to challenge the members on how to give or how to build to the church of the Lord. I know the person that handled the house fellowship today, I mean, the side of the is someone that does not want people to stress themselves beyond normal in the name of contributing to the church of the Lord. That whatever you can do, do at all. Joy. I told you, which I totally support, and then, and then. But that's why that there are still some of us that we are not faithful to that little we supposed to bring to the house of the Lord. And then you can accept with me. And then I've been only been telling us in this church that whatever nine percent. I be mean 90% cannot do. 10% can never do it. The only thing is that we are putting ourselves in problem. Especially when we know the word of the Lord, when we know the truth of the word of the Lord, including me. I've been trying to always afford my including me, but I don't want it to always to, 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 because when I inform including me is that you too, that's when you are not doing it. But with the spirit of humility God has given to me, and the, the way I always want to go, I always want to incorporate myself to anything that I feel is negative, and then it will be like a, it's a, a pointing finger. To, but where the truth needs to be preached, the truth needs to be preached. So that we will not be an hindrance to the growth, to the development, and to the financial good of every one of us. When we look at this side of scripture, I want every one of us to bring it out, to let us see. Look at the page one. Then, then for example, I only want to look at things, not because of myself, but because of the question that may be going on within us. Many of us, I don't know if we are here, but I was in Lagos. I don't know recently if we are here, when G.S. Preach, preach about one cement per, 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 per one person, I don't know if we 
we I don't know if you are here, but I was in Lagos then. But this recent one, I don't know, I couldn't remember vividly how GS preached. But when they were building the headquarters in church, there was a time there was one cement, one pa I mean one bag of cement by one person. We see some people that buy you trust. Some people buy tons of it. So when you look at it, you look at the page one, you will see when I show to God, it shows back to me. That's why that our leader mentioned much, which later it was changed to the giving financially. But the primarily our leader mentioned much about winning of the soul, which is very, very important and necessary. But many of us can use as a cover up from giving something that will pain us. A sacrifice is not a sacrifice if it does not pay. It is true, it shouldn't be with, without grudges. It shouldn't be something we are not happy about. But if we are a child of God, if we belong to God, you should know that one, one, I mean, ten percent of your income belongs to God. No matter what you want to say, do not cover all. It may be painful. You may want to use it to pay your credit card. You may want you to use it to buy cloth for your children. You may want to use it to take care of your wife. You may want to, to use it to take care of your. For somebody like me, take care of my mom in the in the village, so that uh, they will say he has a, he has, I mean he has a child in the United States. But what me is that I'm taking for one belong to God, giving it to that woman, and God knows how to take it back indirectly. Although our God is not wicked, but it's better. We pay it that what ten percent than thinking of smartness of all of the good calculation to Almighty God. Whatever that should be ten percent of God is ten percent of God. Don't because of your wife, don't because of your husband, don't say because of your children, don't say because of your The church we are seeing today, including this small one, including the headquarters, including the deeper Life Bible Church in general, is not building a day. It started from one cover, one ten. And if you listen to one pass, one GS message, if you want to sleep today, I will make sure you get up. Me myself, you are direct to me. <laughs> so. And if I will see somebody who would sleep in, you see, Brother Benjamin is preaching and I'm, I'm sleeping. You see what do I only do? Praise the Lord. I only want us to smile at any time. So, the church is not, the church we are, we are most of today. When we visit that prof last week, did you remember what he said? He said he has gone to our website and then he has read all the doctrine of the church. We are still going to talk about that maybe during my message. If those people who contribute to do that, they do not suffer themselves to do it, it will be a bit difficult. And then some of us that we have listened to U.S. message, I'm very, I only like to revert to Bible, but sometimes I like something physical that we see. Some of us that are, we are listening to this message, or maybe someone or him, I couldn't remember. When they were building Bagada, all the place was like a bush. Then there was a testimony that that's why that he will preach on that day. He will be on that land. They will be cutting 
the bamboo that was on that place. So when we see him using three cars and then he's in the middle, is it now what most of us are looking at today? Me in the middle, including me. Me in the middle, because I've said it. Me in the middle, me in the front, and then another one, we see another security. It's not starting a day. He has paid his due. And many of us, we see one of the pictures we use, whereby it's Sokoto. It's Bojugusekwe. How do we call it? In the one of the video we shows, when he was preaching, he has paid his due. Our teacher has laid emphasis on it that winning so is the most important. Even you that want to bring an offering, if you do not, if your soul is not, I mean, if you have not given your soul to Almighty God, there's no need for you to bring your offering. Because the church does not need it. And then many of us, we have seen whereby some people will bring offering to the church, especially in deeper life, they will trace the source of not one or seven, two person have told me. And one person that was even affected told me that his sister donated 1.5 million dollars, I mean 1.5 million naira, into the offering bag. Then GS called them that they must go and look for that woman to bring out the. Okay, recently we listened to a message like that. That he said he returned all the monies. That we don't need that money. So our teacher have laid emphasis on that very, very important. But I want us to the reason why I come back to this message is because of what headquarters want to do. And because of the challenges our brother may not know. Because of the challenges even we are facing in the church. Whatever is your ten percent is your ten percent. Let us be sincere to ourselves. Eh? There are many times we look at many people like other ministry that yes, they are making it. They have this, we have this. Yes. We see them, we are complaining that maybe what they have done is not so good or uh, is bad. Why can't they take care of the poor? That they collect from the poor to get them themselves rich. Uh, uh, but one thing I observe about them is this their conscience must be clear. That one must not disturb us from contributing to the house of the law whereby we are hearing the word of the Lord. I've heard about some of these ministers. As what we see is what we are talking about, not what we have taught or witnessed ourselves. But I've heard about some of them that by the time they begin the ministry, they don't, the, the Cyrillac, is it Cyrillac or Cyrillac you call it for the children? They have money at home that belongs to the church. And they are feeling hungry. And they don't have money to eat. They have to eat the Cyrillac that belongs to the children, or the old family. So some of them have paid a price. And if there's anything that is erroneous, that is still going on in their life, we pray that God will let them see and God will make everything appropriate in Jesus' name. We human beings, we are free to suspicious. That man has gone to the that woman's house. Maybe they have fornication together. You are not there, it's suspicious. Mm. 
This person have embezzled this account. Uh, there's a pastor in the Charlotte Free Church. Is the one money is coming into his hand. Is the one that is taking care of the money. Do you know that? Is it suspicious? This man have not been doing enough. Is it still, you don't know what is going on in his life. Is it suspicious? You have never seen it. Never. <laughs> I doubt if many people open that in this church. If there's anybody that open like me, was it suspicious? But he, what that let us, let us leave other people. Let us leave them alone. What other people say about you, whatever you are, I mean, or the third party say about you is not what matter. It is the relationship between you and Almighty God. Yes, this one thousand never, never come of I me mean, into my hand. Before I do any other thing about it, please do not look at Pastor Matthew. I mean, even in video, your own righteousness to be fulfilled is that hundred dollar from one thousand dollar come to the house of the Lord. Forget whatever you may have as something you want to do. Forget it. Let us be sincere. And that's why in the book of, yeah, I think the book of Asia, he was telling them, you are building your own house. You know, building your own house, you are taking care of your wife. You are taking care of your husband. You are taking care of your children. Everybody is proud of you that you are good. But the house of the Lord, my own house, is being forgotten you know what building house means not until you put a block I always proud of my family and then when many people say say a lot of things about are, they, are you this are you that you better let me undo in that way as far as this family does not fall and we are not separated let me continue. We see where it's going to end. That's me. I'm building my house. I may decide that, and which I may, I might be doing, decide that, okay, these children, maybe every six months, I must buy six clothes for them. I'm building my house. So that people outside will not say they are, they are walking on the street naked. Or they are putting on the same cloth every week. But when I'm doing that, I should not be taking from the 10%. God said, I should bring to the house of the Lord and use it to buy cloth for them in order to build my, my house so that people will be saying that my house is neat. Let us be sincere. And that's why the man was saying, when I push chauffeur to the law, go put that. He said, the, the book of that Mac I, uh, my, Malachi, he said, bring, come, come and test me. That $1,000, that $5, that $100, that $200 that you think that is enough for you. I don't know if I, you know, I want to be sincere to every one of you. Not that I'm, I'm making mock of myself. I'm telling you to be sincere. I doubt it if all the clothes I put on today, only shoe I bought for myself. Only shoe I bought for myself. And I have seen because of how people are seeing me, many letters, many messages I'm receiving from Nigeria that please help me, help me, help me, help me. So it's not because of the 10% I'm going to take out of 760 something dollar I receive weekly. That's going to give me problem. That can take, take up, I mean, that can take care of what I, I put on. Let me bring that same easy two dollars. Let God let God take care of my let God take care of my, my clothes. 
He knows how to do it. But by the time you are calculating before God that, okay, I'm receiving 720 something dollars. I don't want problem to be at home. I want to do this. I don't want problem to be with my wife. I want to do this. I don't want problem to be with my husband. I want to do this. My parent is sending power in Nigeria. And they must be stopping. Everybody is complaining. I must stop it. And as a result of that, I'm corporate. You don't even know. Thank God. And to be sincere, not that I'm always proud. I'm not proud. I'm telling you of what God is doing in my life. And I'm thanking God that I'm he, in a little. He let me be faithful. When was I was complaining? By my mom. I'm sharing this testimony for you to know that, that all those 10% you are hiding is nothing. You better bring it out to the house of the Lord and let God use it and, and multiply you. And I will share this testimony. You know, I'm very sorry. Apology to my wife. Apology to her. Apology to her. But that's who I am. Not I'm selling my family because of... But if I cannot sell my family to you, who else who am I going to sell it to? It was last week, I was, uh, about a month, I was complaining. That, okay, my mom was sending power and this, the only thing I'm praying for now is that you shouldn't die before that something is, I mean, is completed. You know when God wanted to do it? And I will tell you even if I've not done it. But to let you know that 10% you are hiding is nothing. I told you the message come, they bought a house, a old house, they repair it, after they repair it, we decided that, okay, that house, we are going to name that house after her. And then name it after her, any rent that is coming out of that house is going to be going to her. And we are spending more than two million. It was not just about two months, one month I was complaining. I see what God has done to you. Pay it back. So let's say I now said that okay, because my mom is selling pan wine, everybody is going to be complaining. The 72 or 62 dollar I'm paying every two weeks to the church. I want to be going and what does that 62 dollar can do from what God has done? I open myself as I am. To you and I pray that the grace of the Lord will be with everyone who was in Jesus name my, my, my taka was down uh, I think right away, I was using to all this one then dodge then before Brabe, I'm sorry to mention names I'm very sorry but Brabe, I keep that day that well, are you not using this car for the church why can't you just let us buy another car? Then we are going to be using it. That's how we have that here now. Let's say it's the work I'm doing. Or let's say God that I've not, I'm not, if you say I'm faithful, let me boast. I'm faithful. Let's say I've not been doing that little $62. I said, let me go and take car from the dealer. And the tithe I'm going to be bringing, let me use it to be paying the dealer. If and when I want to be, maybe Brazil will be the one that we are against it. How, can, how are we going to be using the money car, church cars for to buy car for the pastor? But now, if he's ready to wash that car, if Pastor Martin wants to drive it out, he's happy about it. What am I saying? Be faithful to your temple. If you say I open my secret, yes. I hope my Let God cover me off. Be faithful to your ten percent, and uh, that's what is going on between me and the headquarters now. And God is going to help me in Jesus' name. Church you must be paying ten percent to the to the headquarters. Pastor Masi must not be consuming everything, but it is where it is where in Jesus. When we have enough. Child of each will not be consuming everything. But no matter what the case may be, 
I'm challenging everyone of us. I want you to go and read this thing. As a worker, I don't need to hide from you. Because only God knows where you are going to go. You are going to face all these challenges. By the time you start the church, how do you want to face it? That's one. When, so when you look, read all those things very, very well, you see that they are so concerned. Not because of any other thing, to motivate. And they know the more they motivate you, the more you give out, the more God is going to bless you. And God is going to break every one of us in Jesus' name. And the grace of the Lord is going to be sufficient for every one of us in Jesus' name. The book of Deuteronomy 28 15. Book of Deuteronomy. 28 15. Book of Deuteronomy 28 15. Deuteronomy 28 15. Hear the word of the Lord. But it shall come to pass if you will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God to observe to do all his commandments including the one we are laying emphasis on today your 10 percent no matter children whenever everybody anybody give you one dollar remind your parents 10 percent of it coming to the church let's start it teaching, teaching them but shall come to pass if you will not act unto the force of the law your god to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day, that all these causes shall come. No, it shall be blessing to every one of us in Jesus' name. And the grace of the Lord shall be upon every one of us in Jesus' name. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we will not do it in vain. God will pray as well. He never owns anybody. If you want to copy Jesus, Jesus was just preaching. But that's what he has. Whatever you, you are, bring it to the house of the Lord. And God is going to help you. God is going to call help me in Jesus' name. Let us rise up, call upon the name of the Lord. That by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you are going to be faithful. Call upon him. Call upon him. He is Lord of Lord, the King of Kings. It's necessary. Do not say in the church all what they know is bringing money, bringing money, bringing money. It is not. It is not. All what the church is asking for you. It's your ten percent. Why is it so big? What's this big deal in one thousand dollars to give hundred dollars to the church? What was the big deal? Is it because of your husband? Is it because of your wife? Is it because of your children? Is it because of the project you have here and there? Do not forget what the Bible says. If God not build the house, all those people we are building is they are building in vain. Lamb, how to give the Lord in pain? Any sacrifice that not consist pain. You know when? That's what our teacher was saying. When you have become born again and you are a Christian. When you are giving, that pain becomes joy. Call upon the name of the Lord. About the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. Almighty God will continue to help you. You will be faithful in that little thing. And the grace of the Lord will be upon you. 
Do not look at that money. Do not look at his fellow. But look at what mighty God you want to give it to. That is he even this one small or big enough to give to the Lord? God will help you. He will take care of your challenges. He will take care of my challenges. Call upon him. Call upon him. Tell him to teach you how to surrender all for his glory. Forever. Forever. Lead the body, lay it on him. He will help you. Take the word of the Lord serious. Let it touch you. Not God. Bring, 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 bring. Learn how to say God. Take, 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 take. And see. Call upon him. He will do it. For you. he can do it. Leave everything. What is that thing that you have? That is so big before you. If you have not if you have not given it to the Lord, how does God want to know if you give you a bigger one? You are going to use it for his glory. Look at all those other religions. You may be thinking their way is not righteous. But when you look at the way of their life, they give. They give up share testimony of the mouth of other religion, pay my school fees. We are not of the same religion. I've told us the story how the man of other religion owes me in his house. When you see the Tesuba or Teslim, they call it, it's long, longer like, like, like about 12 feet. But then I don't have house. Say, come. As far as you can stay with me, come and stay. That's when I finish my own day. If you're Christian, if a Muslim can if a, if, a, if a Muslim can do that, what about you, my brother, my dear sister? Call upon the name of the Lord. Open my eyes. Let me surrender all unto you. Why? Encourage your husband. If we're going to take calculation, let it take calculation. My husband, have you done this? Let us invest in the future of our children. Husband, encourage your wife. Let us invest in the future of our life. Children, learn from your parents on how to give to Almighty God. Parents, do not forget. You are the example people the children are looking on to. If you are manage, if you are managing your income to the house of the Lord, by the time children grow up, if not by the grace of the Lord, they will manage their own income too, to the house of the Lord. Then how how will the word spread? Call upon him. It is a bitter truth, but it's the word of the Lord. If you are born again, and you know that your, the life you are living, everything you put on, everything you are using, belonging unto God, when you want to give, it will not be so strenuous. Because, you know, you give it to the person that wants it. If you can give you your life, why can't you give you what you use your life to produce? And do not forget the foundation for giving salvation. Do not forget the foundation for giving. I mean, one of the pillars, one of the stand, preaching the word of the Lord. But after you all, you have done that one, complete the commandments. 
so that the house of the Lord can be spread. The word of the Lord can be spread. God will do it. He will touch you. He will touch me. And the grace will be sufficient. In Jesus' name we pray. Our mighty Father, we glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, because of your grace upon us. We thank you, Lord, because of what you have done and what you will still continue to do. We thank you, Lord, because today, this morning again, you have spoken to us about the genuity of your word. Father, here we are. We pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. The word, many times, is too heavy. Too difficult to obey. But as far we belong unto you, and your life, this lead life belong, we are not sugarcoating our mouth, Lord. But this is what I know. If it pays me on this level, I know it will reward everyone that will add my testimony in many fold. I pray for every individual, O oh Lord. You are the law that giveth unto us ability, grace, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding we need to be able to give. Almighty oh Father, we are still asking for you. Give it to us in Jesus' name. When we say this, that's me. We surrender all because we want to give you something. We are still asking you that give us we don't to give you. That's me. We know everything about us belongs unto you. Father, by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we will not disappoint you. And the, all these things will not stay against us in the kingdom of God, even in this world in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answer prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us be seated. It's time for announcement. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. You are welcome to today's Sunday service. And by the grace of God, our weekly activities cause through all the um, as in scattered among the days of the week from Sunday to Sunday. Amen. On Sunday, like this, is a Sunday service of Sunday starts from 9 a.m till 7.30 p.m. In the evening, it is house fellowship, visitation, and evangelism. It has been alternated. And like today, will be the house fellowship at our pastor's house today. So let's find time to, to be present and let's fellowship together. And the Lord God will bless us in Jesus' name. And every Monday is a Bible study. Bible says study to show yourself approved. Ask the man, as a workman that needed not to be ashamed, was rightly divining the word of truth. And it is what you have that you give. It is the amount of the word of God in you that you can de deliver, that you can give out. So the more you hear the word of God, the more you equip yourself. And with that word, you will overcome in Jesus' name. That is why the Bible study is very, very important. When we come to the Bible study, we also hear new things from the Lord. Invite people 
and also let's try to be here and God will help us in Jesus' name. Every fourth and third Monday is our night video from 10 p.m. to 12 a.m., two hours of waiting and praying, interceding, and the Lord God has been answering our prayers. He has been doing things, marvelous things in our lives in Jesus' name. On Thursday is the online conference prayer. To join the online conference prayer, there is a dialing number, which is 712-775-7035. And the access code is 3448823. It starts by 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. One hour online conference prayer. I will say you should pray without word season. In the morning, in noon, and in the evening, I will pray. And we have the Lord that answered prayers. If there is a man to pray, there is the God to answer. So we find time to join in, those, in that prayer. The Lord God will meet us at, at the point of our needs in Jesus' name. Not only meeting us, he will also use us to intercede and to touch lives. And also, let's us not forget our regional um, programs which is also at the back, which is also at the last page of the program sheet. Please kindly go through it so that we'll be able to meet with each of them accordingly. The Lord God has given us the grace and we will use it to fulfill all that he asked of us in Jesus' name. Offering time. Let's do the offering before the Lord. Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We give you all the praise for whom you are. You are the God who gave it all that we have. Father, in you we have all. You give it the power to make words. Father, from the abundance you've given unto us, we bring this token in appreciation. Father, we ask that you will bless our hands that you will bless, O oh God, everything that pertains unto us. That as we give to push to make your word to go forward, Father, we will go forward and never backward in Jesus' name. Father, bless the hand that gave. Father, bless, O oh God, the hands that don't have to give. That next time, O oh God, that they will also be a giver and partaker of your blessings, O oh God. Bless everyone present here tonight. Thank you, Father, for it is done. In Jesus' name we we'll pray. Amen. He has given us victory. We will lift him higher. Jehovah, I will lift him high. He has given me victory. Amen. Let's focus. Let's focus. Avoid every distraction. We are in the presence of the Lord. Amen. When you sing like this, it's a confection. He has given you victory. The angels are here. He has given me victory. Jehovah. When God has given me victory, I will live oh Jehovah, 
Oh, he has given me success. He has given me joy. Oh, I will lift him my hand. God bless you. Amen. Let's stand to our feet for prison worship.
on and celebrate. Come on and celebrate. Come on and celebrate. Come on and celebrate. The resurrection of the Lord. I know He rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sin. I believe. I believe. My shame. My shame is taken away. Clap for Jesus. Oh, he's so good. God sent his son to die for you and me, that none of us will perish but have everlasting life. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathanael of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. Chapter 21. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathanael of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a-fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. 
But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land, full of great fishes, an hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Jesus then cometh, and taketh bread, and giveth them, and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved, because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren, that that disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, He shall not die, but if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? This is the disciple which testifieth of these things, and wrote these things. And we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. May God bless the end of the Gospel according to St. John. May God bless his word and our heart in Jesus' name. We shall listen to the
Jesus, take this life of mine and you. 